Hi, it's Tim from Oracle Base. Welcome. In this video, we'll discuss how Resource Manager can control CPU usage in pluggable databases using the CPU count and CPU min count parameters. Oracle call this dynamic CPU scaling. This can be useful to stop a small number of PDBs using all the CPU resources assigned to the instance. In a previous video, we discussed instance caging for consolidation of multiple instances on a single server. When we're talking about the CPU count and CPU min count parameters within a pluggable database, we can think of this as pluggable database caging, with many of the concepts being similar to instance caging. Depending on the underlying architecture, the CPU count refers to the number of cores or threads available to the instance or PDB. We'll use the term threads, but if your architecture doesn't support multiple threads per core, then threads are synonymous with cores. It's always been possible to control CPU usage in a pluggable database using Resource Manager. Oracle 12.1 introduced container database level resource plans, and Oracle 12.2 simplified them by introducing pluggable database performance profiles. Using these, CPU control is based on shares and utilization percentages of the instance CPU. I've never found this to be particularly intuitive. Oracle 12.2 also introduced the ability to control the CPU usage of a pluggable database using the CPU count parameter. This feels a lot more obvious to me. Oracle 19.4 introduced the CPU min count parameter to give an increased level of flexibility. We connect to the first PDB. For a PDB CPU count to take effect, we must have Resource Manager enabled. If we had a CDB level resource plan, that would enable Resource Manager, but in this case we don't. Instead, we enable Resource Manager in the PDB, which also enables it for the whole instance, including all open PDBs. We could use a custom resource plan, but we'll keep it simple and set the Resource Manager plan parameter to default plan. Then we set the CPU count parameter to 1 for this PDB. The CPU count represents the maximum number of threads the PDB can use. From this point onward, the PDB will be constrained to one CPU thread. We switch to the second PDB. We set the resource manager plan parameter to default plan. We then set the CPU count parameter to 2. From this point onward, this PDB will be constrained to two CPU threads. We still have to make a hard decision. Do we partition the CPUs to guarantee a PDB will get its share, but risk having idle threads? Or over-provision to reduce the chances of idle threads, but risk noisy neighbours affecting the performance of a PDB? Oracle 19.4 allows us to do a hybrid of the two, allowing us to safely over-provision. From Oracle 19.4 we can use the CPU min count parameter to define a minimum CPU reservation for a PDB. We connect to the root container and set the CPU min count parameter to 0.5. This means all PDBs will have half a thread reserved by default. The parameter value can either be a decimal between 0.1 and 0.95 in multiples of 0.05 or integers from 1 to n. We switch to the first PDB. We set the Resource Manager plan parameter to default plan. We set the CPU min count parameter to 1 and the CPU count parameter to 2 for this PDB. From this point onward, this PDB will be constrained to a maximum of two CPU threads, but at minimum it will never drop below one thread. We switch to the second PDB. We set the Resource Manager plan parameter to default plan. We set the CPU min count parameter to 2 and the CPU count parameter to 4 for this PDB. From this point onward, this PDB will be constrained to a maximum of 4 CPU threads, but at minimum it will never drop below 2 threads. So we can think of the CPU min count as our safe partition setting and the CPU count as our risky over provision setting. We guarantee protection from noisy neighbours when the system is under load, but we allow idle threads to be used by other PDBs when the system is under less load.
Oracle call this dynamic CPU scaling. The combination of CPU min count and CPU count feels a lot simpler than a CDB level resource plan. If you combine this with a CDB level resource plan, the most restrictive limit will apply. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.